Hello again from Lionel. In the last nest, number five, I showed you an example of how building a value map generated an aha that really made a so-so performing company into a star. Now in this one, I'm going to suggest a process that will help you build a value map for your business and increase your chances of generating some insights, perhaps even a killer aha. Now the first step is to decide who should participate in its construction. You could do it by yourself, but unless you have no alternatives, that's really not the best arrangement because you should be looking for some fresh thinking that complements your own brilliance. Now, if you are running a fair-sized business, we have found that what's most productive is to assemble a small team of people who can bring to the table different perspectives on the business, experience, knowledge, and even biases that may stem from their personalities. I think you'll find it all good fodder. And one more suggestion. Consider including someone from the outside who may have little knowledge of your business, but has extensive experience in other businesses and industries. This person can bring an especially fresh perspective to the party, which should give you the best chance of generating insights. And to be a little self-serving, the person could be a consultant like me or one of my partners and associates. It might cost you something, but if you get the right person, you should get a value back that is many multiples of its cost. Now, having decided on your team, the next step is to carve out some time and a quiet place to do this. Especially useful is one that comes with a large whiteboard and colored markers because you're going to be drawing and erasing many parts of the value map that will be associated with the business model options you'll be considering. But if the potential presence of a pandemic does not permit the group's physical assembly, or for any other reason, it can also be done using one of the many web conferencing platforms like Zoom or WebEx. So once you've decided on your team and the means for its assembly, how should you proceed? There are many ways of doing this, depending on your business and personal preferences. But I'll share one with you that has worked well for us. The first step is to ask the team members to come to the meeting having done a little preparation. They should first review the concept of values and value flow. An easy way to do this is by reviewing nests number three and number four. And then, based on their knowledge and experience, have them make a list of what they think are the key customer needs and value. Now at the meeting, after you've made an appropriate introduction, start it off by having your team answer 10 questions. The first one is, what values do you think we are creating? And make a list on your board. The next question is, who are your customers? Define and draw your market on the value map. How large is it? Is it growing or shrinking? And if so, by how much in the next year or the next few years? Next, do your customers have customers? Or in the MBA lingo, are you a B2B business? If so, you might want to leave room on the board and continue the value map downstream, as we say, until you reach the end user, as we described in our last nest number four with the Intel example. And if you are in a B2B business, make a list of your downstream customer values as well, like you did for yours. Number three. How do your values reach your customer? Directly or through distribution? And if so, show it on the value map. Number four, how does the customer get to know about the potential values he or she can get from your business? 
Now comes a particularly important one. What are your customers' values? Collect the responses from each team member and make a list on your board that consolidates the answers. Try to crawl into the mind of your typical customer and look at your product or service from their point of view. You might think of an approach that Jeff Bezos is famous for using. Think of the customer as a guest to a party where you and your business is the host. To what extent are they enjoying the party? And here are some sub-questions to consider. What are the customer needs that you are trying to satisfy? What values do your customers have that are associated with those needs in any way? How do they match up with the values you are creating? And how do they compare with what a competitor could provide? Next, what does the customer have to do to get your values? Detail the customer experience. How and why does the customer decide? How do they pay? What's the customer's experience when they receive your values? If it is not simple, detail it on your board. Go as far as you can, including how the customer makes use of your values. Now let's take a look at your significant suppliers, if you have any. What values do they provide to you? How much and how do you pay for them? And these days, you may want to think particularly hard about this. What risk do you have that, that they might fail you in some way or at some time? And what can you do to mitigate that risk? Finally, let's think about how to go about creating the values you are delivering. What are the key steps that your organization takes to create the values? I'm sure you've thought about this a great deal. You might want to draw a separate picture of this entirely, perhaps using a framework that you may be familiar with, such as a value chain, which is a concept that was introduced by Mike Porter many years ago. Let's pause here to give you a chance to detail the values you create and what's needed to create them. And then we'll go on to part two of nest number six.